We're back in my neighborhood, the West Village, which is a really, really great restaurant neighborhood that just keeps getting better. When the pink teacup closed, we were all kind of sad. It was an institution, but when I heard Jody Williams was taking it over, I was like, wow, she's great. I've known her since her days at Mirandi. She's one of the best working chefs in the city. And she's just killing it here at Bouvet. It's this wonderful sort of gastro pub. She's got a name for it. Anyway, it's French and Italian, but really mostly French. The wine list is amazing. The food's great. Lots of small plates. It's packed all the time. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's a story today. We're going to go inside and a day in the life at Bouvet. I'm Mike Colomeco, chef and food lover. Come with me and meet some of today's most interesting chefs and their crews that work in their kitchens. Real chefs real restaurants, and real recipes. That's what's on the menu. This is Mike Colomeco's Real Food. I love to follow the trajectory of New York chefs, and I've known Jody Williams for the better part of a decade. Right now, at Bouvette, her latest restaurant, she is at her best. Jody Williams at Bouvette, thanks for having us today. Great to have you here. So, even in the city of Wild, this place with the pink teacup, talk a little bit about this, this journey. Uh, well, 42 Grove Street between Bleecker and Bedford, um, yeah, it was the pink teacup forever. And uh, we did a um, total renovation. and uh, Including the kitchen? Including the kitchen. Right. I mean, the, we have a table of, for 12 where the kitchen was. But other than that, uh, it's pretty new digs, but uh, still with the, the great old soul and the, uh, the history behind it. I mean, it's a beautiful space. And people who come looking for the pink teacup are really cool. And it's really, I live in the neighborhood, you live in the neighborhood. And it really is a quintessential neighborhood place. I mean, there are places that you could tell, because we live here, you can tell that nobody from around here is eating there. But I come here, and on any given night, it's not just packed, but you'll have 20 somethings on a date. People that could be their grandparents or parents sitting at the tables are probably on a brownstone around the corner. Everybody in between. It's just a real New York. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it's it's, it's lo a lot of locals. I mean, same seat, same time. Find a, people walk in. You know what they're drinking. They come in, and then we get people wandering around. Tourists who pop in and sort of like do a double take. What is this? And what is this? Can I come in? And of course you can come in. It's so cute. It's so inviting. When you walk in, it's like, yeah, this, this feels comfortable. It almost feels like it's been here forever already. Thanks, guys. You can just set the whole tray right here, Danny. Oh, man. It looks good. Man, that looks hey, Mark, good. do I have to eat? Um, no. Yeah, I'll eat a little I'll bit. Fly. Otherwise, people I'll say she's nice. not eating her own yeah, food. Yeah, I eat a lot. <laughs> All right, what do you want to pour with this? What do you uh, want to pour? Go with the Cote d'Oro. Okay. Yeah, this is a really rich... Uh, you can see the color. And we um, pour a lot of this by the glass. I have to do this because I'm an anchovy freak. Tell me a bit about your anchovies. This is a salt cured an uh, anchovy that's been soaked in olive oil. And it's uh, Reca brand, which is the best. Yeah, and what's it sitting on? And butter. Butter. <laughs> Uh, I think this is a uh, Vermont. This is a uh, just classic. I mean, it's butter and anchovies. I'm going to take a corner of this terrine that's wrapped in uh, bacon, studded with pistachios, and uh, we make it here with a little bit of uh, mustard. See, actually, I want to eat the mustard. <laughs> Any excuse to eat mustard. All right, we're going to mm. eat in this random way. I'm moving over to the bacala. You see the fiber of the fish? Yep. It's not like all potatoes, and it's just sort of mashed together. Oh, pardon me. Yeah. And this is, this is how you eat at Bivette. So you come in, and if you're not that hungry, and you're just a little tired, and it's that time of night when you just want two things, three things, one thing maybe, because sometimes one's enough to be great, you come with two or three friends, you're almost eating the entire menu. All right. A Bouvette traditionally is a place where you uh, eat and drink with your friends, your local little neighborhood spot. You know, you can make a meal out of it at dinner. Right? And you it's don't just, close. You don't hang out with a lot of long. food. You're open all day long. I'm open all day long. The same way that bistros would have done that. Yeah, we're open. We're noon to midnight we're or whatever it is. Here, part of the community, and all right, Jody, pour yourself a little more. Let's toast. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Salud. Salud. Ah, the good life at Bouvet. Yeah. Just winding down another afternoon on Grove Street. <laughs> called Pesto di Parma. 
prosciutto from Langriano and uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. <laughs> this isn't spa cuisine, huh? Huh? so we get this no, prosciutto no. which this, is salty and this fatty is, this to begin is, with and we're going to no, grind it together great, yeah. with Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. We're going to spread it on toast and salt. we top it with a little grape musk. And this is beautiful bread. Where do you get your bread from? Royal Crown. It's just such yeah, crusty crazy. looking, slow fermented. And so then we just top it off with a little uh, vincotto, which is a nice flavor, a sweetness to the saltiness and the richness of the cheese. What I like about this is that we so often see prosciutto in this thinly sliced yes. texture, these, yeah. you know, paper thin, and, right. and that's fantastic. But here you have this ground, macerated, where the fat and the oils of the cheese are bleeding in together. Totally weird texture, but you have that great yeah. salty prosciutto flavor in your mouth. Uh, it's a little bizarre. I <laughs> think the grind up, put your prosciutto in the grinder. No. Delicious. Well, anyway, thank you. Mm -hmm. You've been in the city cooking for some time. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> first came in my radar, Giorgione, but after that, where did you go? Uh, after Giorgione, I went around the neighborhood. I was in uh, Gusto with Sasha Muniak. From there, I went over and worked with Keith McNally. Mirandi. Yeah, Mirandi. Then I did my uh, my own thing. Then I sold that, and here I am at uh, Bouvet. And then Bouvet comes, and I remember coming in because you know I live nearby, and you're doing that. I said, "What's it going to be?" And oh, you'll come in and you'll see, and it's very decidedly different. I mean, it's French and regional French. I mean, Italian creeps in for sure. Yes. But talk a little bit about the concept here. Well, mostly it's about all things that uh, that I love. So it's French and Italian. I mean, I can't get rid of the Italian things and uh, that we're passionate about, but. Cooking and learning to cook and teaching myself to cook was all about the journey and learning new things and new experiences and well, I get opportunity to make tart tartan. All right, we're going to make tart tartan, which is this classic yeah. apple tart. Um, simple as can get. We have puff pastry. We have apples. We have we have this is what we're going to use. Tartan is getting hot and sugar. Cheese. Yeah, this is it. We're going to use heat, sugar, and uh, the butter in the puff pastry. So that's it. No liqueurs or anything. Very traditional. Easy. These are gala apples. Use just about any variety of apple. As long as they're uniform in shape, it, it helps. They get a little bit out. About a dozen apples will fill the uh, tart tartan. And I'll take the sugar pretty dark. I think it has more flavor. And I'll let the puff pastry cook for a long time. Need a hand? Always need a hand. It's a one person on. job or a two person job. Yeah. I'll get around the back of you. Yeah. 375? No, I'm a, yeah, it's about. A little yeah. higher? No, 375 is good for the apple. What do we think? An hour? Uh, till they're soft. Gotcha. We'll see. Not, nothing too complicated. No, no, it's. But what uh, it is. we'll probably make about six of these a day. And then we run out, start making some more. <laughs> <laughs> cool. It's been about an hour. There you go. You see the apples have gone down considerably. That's what happens when things cook. And you know, it's hard in small restaurants, right? Because you don't have a pastry chef, so you're the pastry chef. Yeah, I always love being my own pastry chef. You know what I mean? Uh, um, so we do chef's pastry, relatively simple, straightforward things. Yeah. Panna cottas, poached fruit. You know, you develop your repertoire. And, yeah, mine's uh, about three things. <laughs> here, it's, here we only offer two desserts. And I love when people say, can I have the dessert menu? I'm like, well. Well, here it is, chocolate mousse. Yeah, you've got two choices. <laughs> and you know what they say? I'll have both. And that's ready. Back in yeah. the oven. Goes back in the oven till it is hot, hot, and then we have tart. Great. All right, this is the tricky part. I'm gonna try this at home. Uh, uh, can we get a drum roll? Jeez. <laughs> Why didn't I do chocolate mousse here? <laughs> that's right. You know. Is it coming out? Okay. Holy yeah. snarf flat. That's, That's perfect. Good. That's beautiful. All right. Yeah, I'm on. trying to gonna... keep my width. That's I hear the that. way it's all supposed that, to be. All your ocean swimming. <laughs> now get back I'm in the one water. One bite. One bite. <laughs> this is good. Crew Fresh is slightly sour, slightly acidic. Is it gonna, so we got we okay? <laughs> this is easy, but listen, it could be a. Nightmare. So <laughs> bloody. When you're on camera and you can't flip your tart. But this is so good. You know, but I'd really prefer the darker the apple, the more flavor. And mm -hmm. you can really push this to where there's a tint of a, you know, the caramelization will add bitterness to it, which I think is a really lovely flavor. You know, almost palate cleansing at the end of the meal. One of the ways this restaurant works is a lot of the work gets done during the day in that back kitchen. If you're going to feed 350 people out of here, the way the logistics are with this kind of food, 
prep work gets done by day, gets portioned out, because a lot of the food comes off of the bar. That's where they're cooking, they're doing the paninis, they're scooping out, they're handing the ramekins, they're cutting the terrines. Really, the service in this restaurant comes off the bar. It's a brilliant design. And in order to do that, you've got to stay busy. 350 people, two cooks, this thing is full. Full, full of mise en place. You can see, just full. Full of mushrooms, full of rui, full of radish. Who knows what this is, but everything's labeled, everything's dated, and you've got 15 or 20 feet worth of these cambros that organize all of this mise en place so that when they begin to run out, they come down here, replenish, go up to the bar. It's science. I mean, with restaurants, you've got to stay ahead of the curve, and in a restaurant that does 350 covers a night, believe me, this is where a lot of the 350 come from. Made during the day, goes in here, gets chilled, and then bang up to the bar as they need it. I love this business. So we're making salt cod from scratch. That's a big piece of Atlantic cod. We're gonna cover this in salt, and uh, it's probably gonna sit for two weeks. So uh, it will be like wood, and it will have a real pungent, strong it's funky. flavor. It's yeah, funky. very funky. And uh, I like that. So we've got a smaller piece that you've already salted. So right. It's been in for how long? Uh, a couple days in salt? This, no, this is more. This has probably been at least five days, okay. right? And uh, it's already beginning to lose some of the salt in the water. I'll use a knife just to pull out the pin bones. And we're going to do potatoes, garlic. I like stuff like this. I'll leave it in. You know. It's fish. Come on. Olive oil, touch of cream, and uh, let mm. it cook together. Real slow. You mash it with a fork, finish it with more olive oil. It's oil, creamier, creamier, picks it and up. And that's it. So now we're back. This is what the bakala looks like. So, let me take a peek. We have heavy cream that's been a little bit reduced. Not much, because it was a lid. Smells like garlic. Smells a little like fish. These are potatoes. These are potatoes. And our cloves of garlic. Cloves of garlic, and it's and all in there, and it looks, you know, it almost, there we go. almost looks good. I put a spoon in now and just eat it, but that's and not so what we're going to do. Right. It's going to go from a cream cod into bakala. Okay, bye. Well, we're just going to uh, break the potatoes down and mash it, mash it up. Do it grandma style. Yeah, it'll take a little longer. <laughs> and uh, it'll have that consistency. And it's in those little uh, terrines you serve it in. Yeah, so this, this was really delicious. Good, salty. Good. <laughs> I think we'll leave it right there. So, I mean, you, you come to this okay. restaurant the first time and you right. sit down right here, and this is a table where people are eating it. Yeah. You're, <laughs> so welcome to intimacy. Yeah, That's the yeah. stairs, you got, right. don't put anything here, it's gonna fall. Right. And you get this great you little menu, again. you get this great little menu, and it's so cute. Oh, it's got the date stamped on it. I, what's this crazy, like a library card or something. Yeah. And, and then you open it up and it's got this beautiful little... It's a, it's a little pop-up. It's a, it's a, they're little jewels in a way. It's, it's so cute, like, this uh, menu. And that's your it choice. It tells you you're going to have a different experience here. You know, it's just about something to eat and drink. And, but it really and the joy of eating and drinking, and I hope this stuff reflects that. But there's this funny, capricious, not taking yourself so seriously, <laughs> isn't this fun? And yeah. this, even this miniature aspect of the menu, this is a little space. I mean, get used to, get yeah. used to small. Then we move along, and this is a document I've never seen because, as I said, when I, I'm here maybe five times, yeah. you guys always pick my start, wine. Yeah, feed you and drink. Right, I don't really want to think too much, but tell me about this wine list because it's so cool. Well, we wanted to be free of a wine list that was really just regions and prices and, right, and didn't really offer a lot. White, red, yeah, region and, prices. And I don't know a lot about wine. I'm always learning, so I need always more information. So came up with the idea to have the Farmer's Almanac meet the wine list. We broke everything down into by the glass or Italian or French, little side notes and details, side notes to how to remove a wine stain or a recipe for Ali Goat. So all of a sudden now my wine list tells me something about the wine, the winemaker, and uh, groups wine into varietals so I can understand Pinot Noir, whether it's Pinot Noir from Tuscany or Pinot Noir from, you know, Burgundy or so, you know, it's a beginner's guidebook to wine and serves as our wine list. Mm. So it's, it's became a whole playground for us now to uh, work with wine, you know. So, we're going to braise some oxtail. I love oxtail. It's so rich, you know. So here you have orange, rosemary, garlic, and chocolate. Right, and we'll add a little white wine, and we'll just let this reduce, and then we'll come back in, and we'll 
add a little honey and a little sherry vinegar so it's going to have a sweet and sour. Sweet and sour balance. Right? So it's a takeoff of coda alla vaccinata. And then we'll just, just a little chocolate. We're using this to thicken the sauce. And it's not going to have a real chocolate flavor, but it will, it will add to the texture. Visc a little viscosity, yeah, a little yeah. mouthfeel. And it'll be great when the meat's being taken off the bone and blended together and stuff like that. So. All right, put a lid on that bad boy to be continued. This is a long, slow cook. We had the lid, we added liquid, that's and that's what she looks like. They're cooked, they've got gorgeous color, that juice all the way down. You can even see the orange, it's got a little bit of color from all that roast. We're gonna combine it back, we're gonna combine this meat back on to, into the, the juices. Juice. We're gonna add honey, some sherry vinegar, and we're gonna let it just simmer a little bit until it makes like a, uh, a, a mincemeat. It's good stuff. Yeah, chef's love, I mean, this is the kind of, if I, I don't think I've had filet mignon in 20 years, and if I never have another one, I don't care. This, I would miss. Mm. So this is the other part, right? We have the kitchen, and now we got this part. This is where it really all finishes. It goes out to the guests. So it's dessert, it's the whole works, it's espresso, it's cocktails, right in arm's reach of all the guests. So my tickets come up here, and we lay them out, and we make all the dishes. This is going to be uh, just a little uh, salmon riette, uh, creme fraiche with a touch of horseradish and chives. Wow. Right here. So, cassoulet, yeah. duck confit, saucisson, pork belly, beans, carrots, coco vin, just classic. Look at this sauce, it's like, it just smells red winey and chickeny and oniony and there's mushrooms floating around and onions and a chicken leg and a thigh somewhere in there, it's gorgeous. Here with the cassoulet, you can see the duck confit sticking out the top there. Another big piece of pork sausage here, I'll just pick this up and get a... Yeah, get a glimpse of that goodness, man. This is fall winter food at its best, folks. And then this is classic, green French lentils. Any bacon, any pork, any fat in there that comes from an animal? No, that's all vegetarian. This is a vegetarian? Okay, that's awesome. A, that's all right. a bit real vegetarian kind of thing. Okay, so we there, do... There's a whole handful of vegetarian things mixed in here that... Uh, that I never order. Actually, I would yeah. order this because I figured there was oh, bacon sure. in it. <laughs> yeah. Croque monsieur. So, so we know what's in this. Cheese on the top is, is Gruyere. What is it? Yeah, this is. Uh, Gruyere. I think if we just grab it and bust it open, I well, it'll be self-explanatory. Nice. Yeah, you see, you got your cheeses and your bechamel inside there. Okay. Uh, walnut pesto, really uh, popular here. Frank Bruni wrote it up, called it adult peanut butter. <laughs> and uh, this is what we made earlier today, the pesto di Parma. All right, boys, get the 50 mil out. Yeah. This is the oxtail. That looks stupidly good. And this is the salsify. Comes a little plate of... Oh, boudin, wow. Little apples. Where did you get that from? Uh, this is Samaria Bialese. It is? Yeah. Of the cheese. <laughs> All's well with the world. Hey, Jody, congratulations on everything. And it's so cool to watch people's oh. careers and watch you go from here to there. And, and there and here. And here and there in New York. There's all these like pitfalls in New York City, all these places where it can go like wrong and then mm -hmm. it's like exit stage left, whatever happened. But your Bouvette is like insanely busy. Well, thank you. Eight yeah. in the morning till two in the morning. Seven days a non -stop. week. Non-stop. Non-stop, full on. Um, and everybody I've talked to, everybody I've sent loves it, and for good reason. I mean, it's just, it's like consistently well, great. Thank you very much. And the it place is, feels great, too. It is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So I dragged you up here today. Not that you're not busy enough running a restaurant. Pleasure to be dragged by you, Because <laughs> I'm like, what am I going to cook? So, so talk about this dish. Talk about what you're doing. All right. We are going to do carciofi alla Judea. So Classic fried artichokes, Roman. right? Yes. We're going to do like the French fry. We're going to do a double fry. The first one at a low temperature and then we'll do the second one at a higher temperature to, cr uh, to crisp it up. This is a real traditional dish out of Rome where I worked uh, for about three years learning how to cook. This is like kind of that Jewish canon of Roman yeah. cooking, right? I mean, that's sort of where this recipe comes from, no? Uh, yeah, this is uh, the name, as the name implies, uh, Jewish fried artichokes. Be soigné here. I'll do it with that style. All right. Oh, he's making fun of me. No, because so making cute. Fun like of everything, me. like huh. I must feel like I have to get dressed up now to go to Bouvet and comb oh, my hair because no it's way. so cute. It's such a divey hangout. It's no, just, it's, it's just, not divey. It's, got, right. it's way too cute. So right. we've cleaned our artichokes back. We're gonna tackle the stems. I prefer a potato peeler, but you can use a paring knife if you want. I'm gonna take a couple and more off of this one. And I'm just gonna take off more of the dark green skin. These small ones. 
will be softer and probably won't have to get cleaned. But these others. Here's the bigger ones you need to choke out. I like the spoon that I can uh, open get up. Get in there with. And I can just uh, plunge it in and sort of tickle out the, uh, the heart, the yeah, fiber. It's this fuzzy little crazy thing in the middle that yeah, you don't want to eat. there you go. All right, so. All right. We're good. We're good. Stove time. Stove time. So I'll go with the small ones in here. Whoa, nice. Yeah, they're hot. The more we add, we'll lose that heat. So this is the first cooking. We're talking about 10, 12 minutes. I'm going to put them in the bowl, let them rest covered, and they're going to steam and cook the interior a little more. So we'll crank up the gas a little bit. We want to get it to about 375. Yeah, I think it'll probably be hot enough here. So in they go. So I'm, right now I'm looking for just color, so I don't want to overcook them. I'm looking for tenderness, the tip of my knife. And that's it. That's a great color, that's right? That's beautiful. That's gorgeous. That's a nice fried artichoke, huh? All right, we'll shut our oil off so we don't burn the house down. So we season? Yeah. There you go. That's all it needs is salt. Just like everything that's fried, right? Salt. <laughs> like most things. Right. I don't know, okay. food and salt work. It, it, it's Traditionally, it's served like this. Um, if you want, a piece of lemon's not a bad idea, but uh, the simpler the better. Well, hey, you have a bite, I'll have a bite, They kid. smell really good. They yeah, smell really <laughs> good. <laughs> it smells really good. You can't say no All to right. this. Yeah. These are great. Mm -hmm. A little glass of wine or Negroni or something. Yeah, this is good. All well, right. congratulations again, but that's amazing. Well, thank Grove you. Street off of Bleecker, you can't miss it. Walk down Bleecker, make a right on Grove. Right. It's 50 yards down the street to your left. Or look for this guy. <laughs> or look for me waiting out front with everybody else in line, looking at my, trying to text Jody. Hey, can oh, you get on. me in? Oh, everybody gets in. Listen, you squeeze in, you eat and drink all night. It's just. It's true. It's just a, you know, a little of this, a little of that. Well, continued success. You've well, earned thank you. it. Deserve well, thank it you. and all that great thank stuff. You. Okay. Folks, we'll see you next week, like always. Cool. Negroni time. Negroni time. <laughs>